So the Pilates class we are going to do today is going to be all extension. We're not going to go into any kind of situation where we're contracting because the intention is that we work the stomach with very long trunk muscles. The stomach really in its optimum place should support the organs, support the front of the spine from a long shape, not a tight shortened shape. So we're going to build up this trunk stability with that in mind. So to start, let's just lie on our backs and feel the length of the, the feet. You want the feet to be uh, uh, maybe 45 degrees away, not too close to you, because notice when you come in close, it's real easy to get a, um, a tilt of the pelvis, which means you're shortening the stomach. We're aspiring to get the whole skeleton in as long a shape as possible. The tail is moving towards the heel. The head is moving away. The shoulders are nice and wide. And you want this firmness here, but not that. That's a shortening of the muscles, quite the reverse. And as much as you can, and your body's ready to, you want as much of the spine on the mat. Most important though is tail, sacrum, and ribs if possible. Take the sit bones and the heels and see if you can pull them towards each other. So you're engaging this back part of the body to help build stability. Let me get this in. Now, in this position, start by just taking a breath in and fill up the back lung. So you want to get the back of the body really long, really pressed into the mat without shortening anything. And as you breathe out, see if you can sink more and more of the skeleton into the floor without shortening anything. So the abs start to form a little bit of a corset down towards the spine. Breath in again. Fill up the back lungs and the side lungs, very broad, very long, very extended. And then as you breathe out, imprint literally the whole rib cage into the mat. The shoulders are still wide, the neck is long, the hamstrings are still engaged, the sacrum is long in opposition, so we're starting to find this corset. One more time, inhale. Broaden the ribs and widen the back. And then exhale, lengthen the neck, broaden the shoulders, widen the ribs, lengthen the waist, lengthen the tail towards the heel, activate the sit bones and the heels with a slight sense of traction. So we're as long as we possibly can. The abdomen is pulled in towards the spine, but the spine is long. There's no shortness in the spine at all. It's not flexion. It's stably in an extension, it's lengthening out. Now from here, nothing changes in the pelvis. Lift the feet up to 90 degrees. So your thighs are parallel to the floor, the shins are parallel to the floor. Check that the sacrum is long, the stomach is long, the back is lengthened into the mat. Pull the stomach muscles in towards the spine, don't tuck lengthen and then float down. So there's a certain amount of hip flexor that's engaged. The abs are working very hard if you're doing this right. Check that the shoulders are wide, the neck is long, the back is flat. Again, float up. The pelvis should not change shape. It should not tuck under at all because we're keeping the ab muscles long. We're loading them, but we're not asking them to shorten. Slowly lower your feet back down to the mat. One more time like this, this can be a lot of work. Check your whole alignment, check that the shoulders haven't gotten short, check that you're lengthening into the mat without shortening the abs in any way and lift up one more time. Lifting up, lifting up, lifting up, and then lowering down again, lengthening the thighs away from you as you come back down. Now, bring your feet and your knees together and we'll do the same thing. Again, check that you're not rolling. We're not shortening the stomach. We're keeping the sacrum very long and then we're attempting to get the ribs imprinted and pressed into the mat. The shoulders are, shoulder blades are wide. 
and the arms are long and, uh, and the neck is long. Again, hamstrings and heels pulls, pull toward each other. Keep the stomach muscles in as you lift both knees up to tabletop. So you create a complete hinge and corner the pelvis should not have shortened. And then float the legs down without changing shape in the pelvis. So no tucking, no arching. If it starts to really drag on your back, that's your point where you stop. There's, there's weakness there. So you want to stay in that realm. Again, long spine, pull the stomach in and lift. So the stomach muscle should be supporting the front of the spine but keeping the lumbar spine long. You're not pressing it into the mat. You're just keeping it nice and long. So the front and the back are matched. Just for fun, let's put our hands on our belly. Feel how the abdominals stay long, but drop towards the spine. The ribs are in, the shoulders are wide. Can you lift up without pressing the stomach out? Keep it supporting, so creating a real corset here. And then lower back down. Now we're going to add a little bit to this. So just lift the hands off the floor so they're hovering off the floor. Your shoulders are wide, your back is long, your navel is long, your sacrum is long, and lift again. So a little bit harder because there's no hand support. So lower back down. And again, lift. And lower back down. Now lift the arms to the ceiling. Keep the shoulders wide. Find the ribs pressing into the mat, lengthening the stomach muscle, checking that the back is really long and has not shortened. In fact, you may find that as you're warming up, you can get even more length coming in without losing it. So really wrap around the abdomen. Can you lift? Bringing the knees to tabletop. And then lower down, keeping the stomach long. Again, lifting up. Nothing is changing. Lowering back down. Now the arms are long. The shoulders are down. The back is in. The hands are not going to the floor. They're floating off the floor. Wherever you can be without the back losing its integrity and the stomach staying very long. Lift again. Lowering back. And again, lifting. To tabletop. And lowering back down. Bring the arms to the floor. Excuse me, one minute. It seems to be a lot of noise. But whatever, my dog's got a show going on. So long back, now let's lengthen the legs out. So the head is not coming off the floor. We don't have to do the hundreds, but we want to keep the head down so that the weight is completely being held in here. So check, can you get your sacrum long your stomach long, get your ribs in, you know, not closing in any way, very nice and broad, and can you just lift your feet off the ground, just check for a minute, and then put the legs down. So we're going to start from here, so lift your legs, we're just going to do 20 of these. Lift. Breathing in, two, three, four, five, exhale, three, four, five, in, two, three, four, five, exhale, three, four, five, lower the legs down, reconnect to your long abs, your long sacrum, your imprinted broad back, and without the legs lifted, start again, breathing in, two, three, four, five, exhale, three, four, five, in, two, Four, five, sink the bones into the floor. Lift, two, three, four, five, exhale, three, four, five. In, two, three, four, five, exhale, three, four, five. Lower the legs, five, exhale, three, four, five. In, two, three, 
five, exhale, three, four, five, in, two, three, four, five, exhale, three, four, five, in, four, five, exhale, three, five, last one, four, five, exhale, three, four, five, in, two, three, four, five, exhale, three, four, five, put your hands down. And now bend your knees and bring your roll to one side because we're actually keeping the spine long and extended. Let's come up to a seated position. Very important here to get this sacrum completely lifted. So if you can't sit with the knees, the legs long and straight, let's have the knees bent. In fact, let's everybody bend the knees and flex the feet. In this position, can you pull your heels and your sit bones towards each other? So you're pulling up and then lift your back up. So you have a really long spine. Pull the stomach in and fill up your back ribs and broaden your shoulders. The neck should be straight. Lift your arms up in front of you and in one straight line, hinge back. This is like flat back. Find that spot where the stomach is really loaded but not shortened and come back up. And again, low the stomach, lengthen the back, it should be flat, and come back up. If you feel a strain in the back, don't go back as far, but see if you can get even more lift. Just keep lifting the whole trunk up, so you're getting even longer and taller. So it's fine to even stay here. Just keep lifting until the stomach kicks in a little bit. Back if you feel it's okay that the stomach is doing most of the work. And come back up. One more time like this, back. And come back up. Now we'll add a little bit. So the arms are gupping up higher. And you go back again. And let's do three circles here. Circle, two, three. Circle, two, three. Lift the arms up. Lean back. Circle, two, three. Reverse, two, three. Three, lift, lift that spine, lift that stomach, get everything even taller, longer, out of the back, out of the low back, uh, uh, sacrum. And again, one piece, circle, two, three, circle, two, three, and lift, lift, shoulders are down, neck is long, spine is lifted, stomach is supporting the back, bring the hands down. Lengthen the legs out and bring yourselves back on your back quickly because we don't want to have that flexion when we're avoiding that today. Again, lengthen your spine out as much as you can and lengthen the legs out on the floor. You want to feel that openness in the hips as best you can and as much of the spine relaxing into the floor the stomach is engaged, no tucking of the pelvis. The ribs are down. If you're very, if your ribs are really, really high and your back is off the mat, you have to put a pillow under your head because the spine literally hasn't elongated enough yet. But you don't want the height of the pillow to shorten anything, just enough to have weight in the middle rib cage instead of just the high rib cage. So see if you can find the best position for you and lift one leg straight up. Now we're going to do this a few times because it has to be a pure hinge of the hip. If you can't do it with your leg straight, you bend your knee. But the hinge has to happen without any shift happening in the pelvis. And down, one more time, lifting up, and we're going into leg circle. So back is very long, stomach is supporting the back, the ribs are broad on the back, the shoulders are long, and we will do uh, two circles. You're going to cross and one. Nothing is moving here. Circle two. Now, hard one. The foot on the floor is flexed, lifted just off the floor. Again, circle and circle. Lower the leg down. Reverse the circle. 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 Lift the leg up. Circle. So the hip, you can do a bigger circle than I'm doing, but you don't want the hip to move at all. Lower the leg down, 
reconnect stomach to back, long spine, ribs in, broad shoulders, lift the other leg up, make sure that nothing is happening in the hip, nothing is changing shape, lower the leg down. If you are not sure, you can put your hands on the hip bones to see have they changed shape. You want that back extension, no tucking, the tail is really long and down. One more time and lifting up. The bottom leg is flexed and long. If you need to bend this leg to get to 90 degrees, do so. And we'll do two circles. Make sure you're really connected to the floor. Circle one, circle two, lift the bottom leg. Circle one, circle two, lower the bottom leg, lengthen the hip flexor, reverse circle. Circle, lift the bottom leg, nothing changes. Circle, circle, leg down, and leg all the way down. So now we will bend the knees up. This is hard work, it's very detailed work. No rolling like a ball because we would be rounding. What we will do here, so your feet again are at this position, we will practice lifting the head without shortening anything. So be aware of the plane of your face and can you lift your chin and your nose just an inch off the floor and then lower it back down. Now this can put a lot of strain in the neck. See if you can fantasize that it's coming from here. So you activate this whole front trunk and lift. No shortening of the trunk but make the trunk contract to hold the weight of the face and down. One more time like this, lift and down. So there should be no shift happening here, but the muscles should fire. From this position, bring the knees to tabletop. Keep your sacrum and tail down and the waist long, feet to your bottom, and then bring them in further. No shortening in here. So if anything, the hamstrings are longer whatever is suits you. Now, take the right leg and extend the left leg out. Keep the stomach long, the elbows are slightly wide. The ribs should be heavy, the front trunk should be heavy. Switch your legs, switch your legs, switch your legs. Now lift the face a little bit. Switch your legs, the trunk should be working very hard, the stomach should be really loaded. Switch. Switch, one more time, switch, 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 lift and load that front trunk. The ribs should be very heavy, but you should not, you want that front trunk long and balancing the back trunk. Lower your head down, keep your knees in, keep this corner, very important at the corner, long corset broad back and double leg stretches so from here the legs and the arms go away circle the arms nothing is moving in the trunk bend the knees back in again long neck long ribs long arms and legs circle them down if you can't sustain the shape take your limbs higher lift your face an inch off the floor long circle in, one more time, long, circle, in, lower your head back down. Reconnect to the whole pelvis being long, stomach is sucked in, waist is very, um, very elongated, so it's an extension, not a flexion. Lift both legs to the ceiling for your scissors again. This corner is crucial, and then you load this area. Head is down, pull and pull for scissors, scissor, nothing should move in the pelvis, scissor, scissor, keep those corners of the hips long, scissor, head is up, scissor, scissor, bring the legs up, drop your head down. Again today, if you cannot have your legs straight without your trunk shortening, please bend the knees so you can make sure the sacrum and the tail is down. If you can have your legs long, 
Excellent. Hands behind your head. The head will lift a little bit. You keep the head heavy into the hands. And uh, so pressure of the hands is up. The head is down. Most of the work is in the trunk. Lower the legs. Nothing is changing. And lift. Lower. And lift. Lower. Lift. And lower. And lift and bend your knees. Put your feet on the floor. Roll to one side. Bring yourself up because we're not rounding the back today. We're working into extension. From here for spine straight forward. The feet are apart. But let's pull the sit bones backwards just to encourage this ability of the tail. It's like someone's pulling this part of you up and then you're stacking yourself on top of this. If you ever look at children, babies, when they get to the point where they sit, they sit like this. They have everything just stacked and comfortable and effortless. So get this sense of lifting and now I'm lifting my arms. Can you get even more length in the stomach? So the hands are in front of you. We're going to go forward with a flat back. So no rounding. You send the sit bones back and you just hinge forward, flexing the legs. Come back. Lift a little more in the waist. The stomach comes even further in towards the spine and hinge forward. And back and again lift even more hinge forward and back one more time lift even more hinge forward and back. bring the hands down and bring your legs together for a minute now we're going to do an easy forward bend to relax but really passive don't um, stretch or pull just let yourself relax for a minute. So you let the back muscles relax, the shoulders relax, the neck relax. You can have your hands more forward. Don't push it. Don't try to get anywhere deep and intense. Just allow all the muscles to let go for a minute. And then come back up again, nice and tall. From here, open the legs out. Flex your feet, and we'll go into the equivalent of a saw, but the same thing with this nice lifted back, lifted stomach. And first of all, just take, so this hand is down. You're keeping yourself quite square, but a very slight stretch. Now take the left hip, the opposite hip, and really pull it back, and just lean forward in a straight line. The arms are going in that position, but you have this length, and the foot is really flexing. Come back and lift. Now the right hip is pressing down and the left heel is pressing. So you're reaching to the left, but the back is very long. You're reaching from the hips. You're not bending at all. And up, first side again. Lifting and stretching. The arms are pulling a little bit apart if you can. And up. Arms put a little bit apart. And up, one more time, arms pull a little bit apart, and up, and arms go a little bit apart, and up. Very nice, again, just a moment to relax everything, let yourself go from any tension or tightness, soften the neck, and then again, lay down on your backs. From here, your feet will be out, so we're going to do a little bit of a rotational movement. You want your arms neatly by your sides. Again, get this sense of the mat being the teacher for the longest back you can have without tucking. None of this. Really long back, and the ribs are very broad in the back, so as much flatness in the back body, and then the corseting of the muscles. Now, lift your toe, your heels a little bit. Your ribs are staying on the mat and the knees are one on top of the other. Just take one hip over and back. Oh, I got a cramp, excuse me. Oh my goodness, turning on muscles that I don't usually use. And other side, 
So as you row, keep your ribs down and into the mat. So you won't be able to go very far, and you keep one hip, one knee on top of the other. So it's not a big twist, but it's just enough to get the waist to work. And keep checking those ribs that they are pressing into the mat. So it's all the waist muscles, all of your obliques that are being stimulated. And the front body is nice and long. One more time and over. From here, you're still nice and long. And let's now go into corkscrew, but the same thing. We want this strong hinge, slight external rotation. So there's the energy between the heels. And you're not going to go very far over because we want the back long. We want everything to stay connected. So very slightly to the right. You can go down as much as you feel you're ready to, to the left, and then up in the center. So it's not really big, it's a different priority. Left, down, right, and up. Keep that back very long. Can you keep the ribs stable? First side, the stomach is doing a lot of work. The whole trunk is doing work. And up, then you reverse it, left, Long in the trunk, long in the stomach, and back one more time. So it's more of an oblong circle than it is a circle, you could say. And bend the knees, check the corner. So for many of us, we actually have to emphasize keeping the spine long here as we bend because we usually bend and tuck the pelvis and we want to develop the skill to recognize this corner and then extend the legs out. From here go on to your stomach and let's have the legs long and together and as best you can you press the sacrum into the mat and now if you take your armpits and bring them towards the mat you'll be able to flatten out the upper back. So you want as much, again, the same thing. Very long abs, very long corseted stomach, and very long spine. So this pressure is not a tuck. It's just down to anchor and start to connect stability into the glutes. You want to feel them gently firing. And the first movement is just lifting the chest. So we want to lift the shoulders so the upper back starts to work. And down. Again, lift again. The pelvis is stable. Can you find the muscles in your upper back in your rib cage? And down. One more time. Press the hips in and lift. So we're waking up muscles that tend to be very dormant. Let's refine this by bringing our hands holding the elbows. So this is going to start to stretch the side ribs. Can you bring your forehead to the mat? Can you lift your arms off the mat? And down. Again, arms off the mat, elbows. One more time, elbows. Now we're adding to this. So your elbows come up and your head. So now you probably are really feeling the ribs working hard, the upper back working hard, and coming down. Again, lift, so you're hovering, and down. So this is asking a very pure swan to start to manifest, and down. From here, put your forehead on the mat and bring your hands neatly close to your shoulders. Same thing. Can you feel this length in the pelvis? Use the same muscles to come up a little bit. So the rib cage is working, the neck is long, the shoulders are wide and pulled away from the ears. And down. Again, glide the shoulder blades wide, but feel how you're getting long and forward. And down. Again. Broadening, broad shoulders, we're not going high, we're waking up this upper back, which tends not to work for many of us. 
Then bring yourselves up on your elbows. So you can be quite low down or you can be higher. And let's make fists for the double leg kicks. So now, instead of having an arc in the back, can you pull, so we're getting a bit of a corset around the, st the stomach is so pulled in that you're sandwiching your spine and you're, again, that extension in the back as best you can. So keep this nice length, bend one knee and kick towards your bottom without changing shape. We're going slow, kick, kick, and lengthen the leg out. We're looking to keep the pelvis really stable so we can isolate all of this. Kick, kick, and lengthen out. Broad back, kick, kick, and down. Other side, long neck, long spine, and down. Keep the stomach pulling up so the stomach is very long. It's more about length than anything else. And down. Drop your head down to one side. Let the hands come behind the back for double leg kicks. Elbows are nice and wide. Again, this sense of length in the tail, not a tuck, and then length through the legs. From this position, kick three times. Kick. This should not get short. Two, three. Let's separate the hands. Broaden the shoulders and hover off the floor with the shoulders pulling back. So it's firing the whole rib cage. Other side. Kick. Two, three. Legs feet down. Broaden the shoulders and lift. First side. Kick, kick. And broaden the shoulders. Press the hips down. Lift. Other side, kick, 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 and lift one more set like this, really working the back muscles now, kick, two, three, long sacrum, long legs, nice long spine, long neck, and down, last one, kick, two, three, and length. Can you be longer? Can you be broader? Can the back work without shortening in the waist area? And down. Very good. Sit back towards your heels. Once you've sat back, then you relax over. You can be in child's pose. Whatever position is good for you, don't push into anything extensive because that will start to curve the spine. And today, we're looking to keep the spinal column as long as possible. Very nice on your back. Again, find this beautiful length. Again, the corner. Remember, the moment you go into flexion, you actually shorten this area. We want this area long. We really want a very defined hinge between the hip and the pelvis. And then the stomach dropping into the back, the ribs dropping into the floor, and this whole area really being strengthened and toned. From this position, we're going to do the bridges. So the he heels and the feet and the knees are, are, are pressing in towards each other, but the feet aren't too close to the hips. Just lift up and send the hips away from you. Your hamstrings should be working quite hard and your glutes probably will fire. Sometimes the glutes don't fire immediately because they need to be woken up. Lift again, so I'm not rolling through my spine today. I'm literally lifting. I'm just elongating everything to keep the trunk long. Three more times, simple version. Keep those knees pressed together, inner thigh. Make sure you're pulling towards your knees, not pushing towards your head. You want that tractioning towards the lower body. And down, two more times like this. Really squeeze everything tight. And down. Last one. And squeeze everything nice and tight. Lift a bit more if you're able to. And down. Now we're going to add some intensity to this. So again, make sure if the feet are too close, it's easy to get into this flexion. We don't want that. Much harder to do. 
even if you don't get up as high. So hug the hips, inner thighs working. Double check on your inner thighs working. Put your hands here and see if, see if they're firing. They often, it's quite common that they're not turned on. So do your best to get them engaged first. And then lift. Once you're up here, extend one leg, flex it, point it, put it down. Keep the hips lifted, other leg up. Flex, point, down. Keep pulling towards the heel. Lift, flex, point, down. I, ha I keep dropping in my boots. I have very weak hips, so they need room for improvement. And down, tightening and firming. One more set. Lift, lower, down. And other side. Flex, point, down, lift a little more, lower everything down. Lengthen your back out. And let's go on to our sides, the side kicks. So same rules. You don't lift your head up. We want this, the, back, the body as long as possible. If you can, with your imagination, your head and your shoulders and your sacrum would be against the wall. Your hips are exactly stacked and your feet are in front. On camera. Now, really check the stacking and the length here. This should be a very distinct corner, not a tuck. That's a tuck. Not a tuck today. And a lot of support. Can you bring your other hand up so you're balanced, so you really want to sink in? This is just a test. Then bring your hand down. Lift the top leg up and slightly turn it out. Make sure this corner happens. Bring the leg in front and double pulse. You can go as far forward as you can. I don't have a lot of range for myself. And back. Make that corner. Back, back. So nothing should be moving in your body. Nothing at all. Just the hinge from the hip. You should be working so hard that Nobody would know you're working this hard. One more time, keep that corner and bring the leg down. If you want to make it, we're going to do two. Lift your head, the arm up, find that stomach, lift the leg, nothing should move. Now, the elbow, forward, forward, back, back. The elbow should not move at all. Nothing should move in your upper body. Back, back, bring the leg down. Very good. Bring the hand back. Turn the top leg out a little bit and lift it up. You can go as high as you're able to get it and go, go down. I'm not a good demo for it right now. Lift because this hip is very restricted. So just get the... Nothing should move in the trunk. You're hinging in the hip. That's the trick. Lift. And down. Let's get this hand up here so we really find the length. And down. And last one like this. And down. Very nice. Check all of your alignment again that you've not shortened anywhere. It's your head long. Usually the tendency is to go down. Keep your head elegant. Lift the leg in little circles. One, two, three, four, five. Reverse. One, Two, three, four, five. Lower the leg down. Now, your legs are in front. You've got this corner. Can you lift both legs up? Lower them down. They usually swing back. Don't let them swing back. If you can't lift the legs, imagine lifting them because it's a completely different muscle group when you're doing it like this. Lift. And down. Really strong people can do it like this. I can't. Lift. <laughs> and down. Very good. Onto your belly for little beats. Forehead on your fingertips. Legs along and together. Find that length in the waist. Lift your legs off the floor. Little beats. 20 of them. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 2, 3. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and lower down. All right. 
Let's go to the other side. So lying on the back part of your mat. Your head is supported so you're as close to a straight line as you can and your feet are on a diagonal in front of you. You want this very long waist. Everything, your head is relaxed. If it's really hard, you can get a little pillow here for yourself, just for, for future. Fine, remember, not a tuck. That length, lift the leg up and to the front. Front, front, make a corner. Nothing change, back, back. Front, front, this should be a swinging joint and nothing else should move. Back, back, front, front, Back, back, bring the legs together. If I go back, I'll knock over my back <laughs> set. <laughs> um, here we go. Forward, forward, back, back, forward, forward. One, and this is our last one to, with, with the pendulum. Bring the leg down, bring the hand down, recommit to the center of your body, turn the leg out, lift it up, lower it down. Nothing should change here. Everything should be super strong. And down. And lift. And down. So very controlled. Very stable. Hand up. Recommit. And down. One more time like this. Lift. And down. Hands here. And little circle. Five. Four. Three, two, one, reverse, five, four, three, two, one. Now check that you still have a corner. You're on a diagonal, your spine is long. Can you lift? Harder for me to lift on this side. And down, my whole upper body is being engaged. Pull it there, the legs are working now. And down, two more times. Lift, Rawr. And down the way I can do it like this, but that's my goal. Lift. And down. Wow. All right. Let's come on the hands and knees. So here you are. Check that the spine is long. So again, rounded, no, arch, no. Can you get this real long, flat, long, broad back, broad shoulders? And the feeling is that you're really pushing away from the floor. So slightly claw your fingers and get this length. From here, keep the length, keep the stomach supporting your back and take one foot back and then the other foot back. So you have a plank position. So just feel how the trunk is being supported by the stomach and bend and bend and reverse it. Find the stability in the center of your body. Take your left leg back, your right leg back, hold it, hold it, hold it and left knee in and right knee. Now from here, open your knees a little bit. Find the center and take your right arm forward. And down, nothing should be moving. Take your left leg. So how high the arm goes is not interesting. That the back body doesn't move, it's your top priority. So even if your limb doesn't come off the floor, you only lift if you can do it without your waist and hip changing shape. And back, and other side, nothing should move. Try to get in touch with your shape and work around the trunk. And down. Now we're going to do the right hand and the left leg. Lift, nothing should change in the trunk. And down, and opposite. Nothing should change in the trunk. And down. Now, a little bit harder, right arm and left leg. Take the hand to the side, bend the left knee to the side. So you've got these two limbs off to the side, so we're side loading now. Bring them under, opposite, left hand and right leg lift. The hand goes to the side. Don't lift the knee too high. If you lift it too high, your pelvis will move. You are connecting to the stability of the body. And down. First side. 
stay very centered. You've got to really concentrate on this one. The priority is a stable trunk. And then other side. Bring it up. It's like the limbs are pulling you in the opposite direction. And down. Take a moment to rest. We're going to do another stretch now into the quads on the hands and knees. So come back onto your hands and knees. Take the left leg back and lift it up. Now, keep the trunk and the waist steady and bend the knee. See if you can bend it and take your right hand and can you feel towards the leg? Maybe you find it. Now, see, now I'm twisting. The whole idea is can you find your limb? For me, I cannot. So I should. So if you can grab the foot, great. If you can't, you just hold this position. If you have the leg, you pull a little bit, put it down, find your center, take your other leg out and up, bend it. Take the opposite hand. Can you stay stable as you do it? Can you find the foot? I am cheating. And then can you lift? But boy, can I feel new muscles being asked to fire. And bring the leg down and sit back into your heels. Now, just a little bit into the side waist. You want to have your elbow and you want your legs straight. So from this position, the shoulders over the elbow, you pull the stomach up, you lengthen everything as much as you can. Can you lift up? So first your hand is going to be here. It's like you're standing, but you're on your side. Hold it. Hold it, hold it, and come down. So only lift this hand off the floor if you can sustain the spine. Find your long spine, find that corset, and lift your hips. Really make the hips be the power and the waist be the power. Hold. If you want to go to the next level, you take your hand up. Hold it, hold it, hold it, and come down. From here, other side. On your elbow, the legs are long. Try and pull so you're not in a banana shape, you could say. As much of a straight spine as you're able to get in this shape, a little bit, and then get those hips to go up. Really flex them up and then hold. Keep your hand on the floor if you can. Do this without switching, wobbling all over the place. And down, long legs. Find that length in the middle, the grabbing in the, around the waist, grabbing the spine, lift up. Here, and then arm up. Hold it, hold it, hold it, and down. All right, a lot of work in the trunk just to hold and develop the skeleton. Now from here, Let's have the knees about hip width apart. The feet can be together. So a little bit of a narrow position. We'll adjust the camera. Okay. So from this kneeling position, you're going to come halfway up. Notice that I'm keeping this corner. And then you bring the arms forward. So we'll, and you want the stomach supporting the back. The back is long. And can you lift your arms up? So you want to feel what's happening in the whole trunk and the position, come back down, be aware of from the hips to the armpit, you're supporting everything is long, the lumbar spine waist there is really being held, and you lift. So the quads are working some, the glutes working some, making it harder if you lift your arms, and down. And we'll do the same thing in standing. So come up to a standing position. Let's hope I can get myself I just about fit. <laughs> My issue is always camera angles. Okay, let's hope this is going to work. So we want the feet hip width apart, get a sense of what the long spine is, where are the hips, where are the shoulders, where are the head. And now send the hips back and keep that back long. So see if you can get a sense of this corner, this diagonal, and then take the arms up. So it's really like chair pose in 
yoga, very strengthening on the, all the chains in the body. So you want your back long. You only go as low as you're able to control the ankles. Come back up. Get a sense of the vertical lift and, lift and energy in your body. Again, sit back so you're hinging. We're waking up the glutes, waking up the leg muscles, waking up all of the trunk to support everything. The arms are long. And come back up. And just to finish standing, we want a nice, robust, straight position. Nice sense of stability in the hips. Can you lift your right leg up and down? Left leg up and down. Right leg up and down. Remember, it's just hinging in the hip. And down, now take the arms all the way up and down. Up and down. Up and down and up and down and just take a moment to stand you should have a lot of energy in your body now you should feel a lot of lift a certain amount of stimulation for your posture a lot of integrity in the joints and they well done not not easy to do